Welcome back to Unirunner Video Drum Lessons for Thursday, November 1st, 2007. My name's Darren Mathis, and glad you could tune in. Today we talk about slipping of sticks, selections of symbols, why, how, and what you use all those symbols for, and also choosing the right stick. I want to thank Paul who sent in a few questions today for me to address and also Paul works at Eddie Graphic Design, the company responsible for designing the uh, animation that you saw at the intro of today's podcast. So I want to thank Paul a lot for doing that really cool intro and some of, providing some other video elements as well. Darren, thanks for the, all the info you've been sharing on your podcast. They've been a big help. He says, when I play I mostly use an American grip. After playing for a short time I have to move the sticks position in my hands because they keep slipping, especially when I'm playing eighth notes on the hi-hat. Do you recommend putting anything on the wood sticks to keep them from slipping, like tape maybe? Well, thanks for your question, Paul. Now, Paul's question about stick slipping was an interesting one for me to consider because I remember when I uh, had only been playing for a little while, I remember that problem of my sticks slipping and I was just always afraid that they were going to go flying out of my hand. And now these days I I guess I haven't thought about that for a while until Paul's question about sticks slipping and now I'm wondering why I don't think about that anymore. I don't have a problem with my sticks slipping. I don't find myself having to readjust or move my hand. And I think it my, my suspicion is it has to do with and I don't use any tape or rubber cement or whatever you might use or special grip a wax or anything like that on the sticks. My suspicion is that it has to do with my grip itself and how it's changed or evolved over the years. And so, if you look at my hand here, the essence of my grip, and when you start out with the either French grip, which has your thumb on top like this, and your fingers act as the pistons down here, or German grip, where it's more of a wrist action and your fingers pulling in, or American grip, which is somewhere in between. Uh, the fulcrum is really the focal point of the grip. And so my suspicion is that a stick might slip because the motion is more this way or this way, more horizontal than more of a seesaw motion. And so that might be caused by getting too much arm or too much shoulder or wrist into it. Just, you're just kind of throwing the stick and your hands uh, doesn't have a consistent grip at the fulcrum. So I think if what's happened for me is that my focus has gotten on that fulcrum and that the stick, that stick acts like a seesaw. And remember you want to stick, grip the stick or the fulcrum is ideally where it's going to have this balance point where it bounces the most number of times on your drum head and that way you'll have to do the least amount of work. So what's happened I think for me that focal point is really where the grip is and that these fingers come under here just like pistons but as long as that grip is consistent and I've heard it said that you want to grip the stick like you were holding a bird. Uh, you don't want to crush the bird but you don't want the bird to get away. And so I think if you focus on that seesaw action, that the stick is going to go more up and down and your hands and wrists are acting more like a lever, like this, it's going to stay in place a little bit more. And just make sure that grip right there is steady. Now if you want to experiment with that, maybe put some double back stick tape or I, I don't know what you might put on there, maybe some tape of some sort that has a bit of a grip to it, and just experiment and try that right there on that fulcrum point and just use those two fingers on it and then wrap the other fingers around it. And If your stick still slips in that situation I would say you probably need to focus more on that fulcrum and that maybe your grip in general is distributed maybe among these back fingers or not consistently among fingers and that could cause if, if fingers are letting off or gripping inconsistently, then the stick would definitely work itself out in a horizontal manner rather than up and down. Because if you think of a seesaw, there's not a lot of force or inertia that's pulling it this way or that. 
And so just think about having that fulcrum as the focal point and holding onto the stick at that balance point and using your fingers as kind of the pistons in your wrist. Your fingers and your wrists are really the uh, most efficient muscles to use in most situations, especially if you're playing eighth notes, sixteenth notes a lot on the hi-hat. Paul also mentioned going to his local music store and being confronted with a dizzying array of drumsticks, which I also have myself, kind of a dizzying array of drumsticks in my stick bag. Like I've mentioned, I just recently started using Jojo Mayer's signature sticks. They're a 5A, which I would say is probably the average stick size that most people start with, 5A, but they're a little bit shorter, and so they're a little bit lighter weight. And it's just been kind of fun. I like to experiment with different sticks and a lot of it just comes down to the way it feels. I remember I first started playing with two Bs, which are bigger than these, and I just thought that was the normal size because that's what my music teacher told me to use. And so when I discovered other sizes, I used to think that, like for instance, seven A's, I've got some seven A's here, yet more sticks. I used to think they were kind of for, for wimps because they're so skinny and lightweight. But actually, if you're playing certain types of music, they'll come in handy because you'll be able to play with a lighter touch. I've got some oak ones here that are pro mark, Japanese oak, and they are just really solid and heavy. And I've had these forever, I think since high school, and they're barely even dented up because they're oak. And I've also got some American hickory ones that I've had for a while too that are pro mark 7As. I just don't use them a lot, so they're uh, in pretty good shape. They've got barrel tips. So if you have a tip like this, where it's more of a barrel shaped, flat shape, as opposed to, uh, let's see if I can find a different, as opposed to a tip like this, you're gonna get more of a full sound out of your cymbals because there's more wood hitting the cymbal with this flat shape, as opposed to a more beaded shape like this. And this one is a uh, the Steve Jordan signature stick from Vic Firth. And it's got a beaded shape, which you get more of a, a ping sounding ping sound out of your cymbals. Uh, so that's the difference in a couple shapes of tips there. But generally, I would say start with a 5A is what I tell my students, and then go from there. Uh, see if a 5A is comfortable. If you want to go lighter weight, there's no reason not to find a skinnier stick. It's just all an individual feel and also the type of music you're playing. So in general the higher the number of sticks, like for instance the 7A is going to be skinnier than a 5A. And also if you're in your mu a music store and you're trying different sticks, lots of times they might not have every, every size of stick available, especially I found that with Vic Firth in our local music store that I wanted something that was in between a size. Like for instance, I wanted a stick that was sh longer than a 7A, which is typically pretty skinny, but the same width as a 7A and that's a 8D, so that I found that stick, which is longer than a 7A, so you get a little more reach, and it's a little bit heavier than a 7A. Also, a 8.5A, I've tried that one because that's a, I think it's somewhere in between the thickness of a 5A and a 7A, so it's kind of uh, in between there, and it's the length of a 8D or a 5A. So experiment, uh, it's great if your music store has a whole array of sticks there, see if they let you use a practice pad, a lot of them, like our music store, local music stores will have practice pads set up right next to the stick so you can get a feel for it, because you don't want to just wave them in the air, it's not going to give you quite as good of impression of what the stick will feel like, and if you can play it on a kit, even better. And for Paul's last question, he writes, Darren, when I watch videos of some of the big name drummers performing, I see that they have a massive array of different kinds of cymbals. I have three, he says. I'm not ready to add more instruments to my set, but what are all these cymbals they use and how might they fit into a beat or fill? Uh, you'll find that a lot of it's just having cymbals in different places, especially if you have a large kit. Say you're doing a fill over here, you want to end a, uh, a fill at, at, when you come off this last floor tom, you're not going to want to have to come way over here to a cymbal. So that was one thing, advantage I found when I got one, two, three, four, five cymbals up here to choose from. And it's really your tonal preference of what cymbals you choose. Go into a music store, I always say any music store that's not going to let you play the cymbal before you buy it, it's probably not a good music store, not worth buying that cymbal there. 
if you buy a cymbal online, sometimes they'll have uh, sound samples of what the cymbals sound like, but those are really hard to tell. Um, one good idea that I've heard if you're buying or choosing new cymbals is to take your current cymbal that you're really familiar with into the drum or into the music store and see how that new cymbal compares to your old cymbal. Uh, because it's really hard, even for me when I bought a cymbal before I brought it home, it sounded totally different. And our local music store will usually let you exchange it. And it's, it's impossible to tell really what it's going to sound like until you get it home or in an environment you're used to hearing it in and within the setup that you want. So it'd be, it's ideal if you can uh, pick and choose that way, your cymbal selection. But as far as what all these cymbals are for, there are really no set rules. Uh, you could use a huge ride cymbal for a crash cymbal. You could use a huge china cymbal for a, you know, like a, a ride type cymbal. Uh, no set rules. You could just crash all day long on a splash. Uh, but for most drumming, a, a real simple setup, you know, three cymbals is just fine, you know, depending on your, pre your personal style and how flashy you want to appear and how big a kit and how much stuff you want to haul around, really. Especially when I think of folks like uh, Terry Bazio, who has just a massive kit, you know, four or more bass drums and just cymbals all over the place. Uh, actually, I saw Terry here in Sioux Falls at a clinic at Sioux Falls Music, and he talked about, you know, he kind of compared his set to a piano, and that each instrument, each drum or cymbal was kind of the equivalent to a key on a keyboard, and that. He, really, he says he really can't do what he does with anything less these days, and I can see that because a lot of his drumming is really melodic. So he wants to have a large variety, especially if you're playing solo drum music. Uh, it'll be more interesting for your listeners if you can vary up the colors. But a lot of people don't even need a lot of cymbals to do that because they can get a wide range of sounds just off of one cymbal, just in the technique they use and their touch. So those are things to keep in mind. Paul, I hope those... Uh, that helped out a little bit as far as your questions and thanks again for submitting those and if you've got a question you want, to, want me to take a crack at you can send it to info at unirunner.com or go to unirunner.com and leave a comment on that page well until next time keep a grip on those sticks keep practicing and god bless this episode of unirunner video drum lessons has been sponsored by eddie graphic design you can reach them on the web at www.eddiegraphicdesign.com.